guess first of all, I'll say thank you everybody for being here tonight. Uh, it's a uh, wonderful venue, and um, unfortunately, this isn't the first time I've talked uh, one of these events here at the um, Most of the speeches that I do, I don't actually write, but I had to write this one. Uh, we're going to have to get through this one. <sighs> My name is Sean Rooney. Uh, I'm from Medicine Map. Uh, for the past two and a half years, both my wife and I have pretty much spent most of our time in Calgary and Rover Children's Hospital. That's actually where we both grew up. But I'll be honest, it is a bit insane that I'm standing here today uh, in front of a group of people I mostly don't know, um, telling a story that, that nobody should ever have to tell, um, but one that I hope reminds you all of why charities like this exist. I know the drive north to Calgary from here. It's boring, <laughs> but, but at least it's over pretty quick. Like any long route, the uh, more times you travel it, the easier it usually gets. Uh, no different from Medicine Hat, by the way. Uh, but imagine driving there and back every week for two years with your destination, the Children's Hospital, and your boy who has cancer. Our story starts further back. My wife Trish and I struggled with the team, took five long years and two miscarriages before a miracle arrived. But what a incredible day in 2012, we welcomed Dominic into the world. Everyone's baby is a miracle. Let's get that out of the way first. Your little guy or gal is the most important thing in your world. The greatest, one of a kind. We locked out. Uh, he slept through the night, almost from the start. <laughs> Dom was almost always happy. Uh, we took him swimming when he was only a few months old. Trisha attorney to leave and took him down to the fact that if your kid's under two, they can fly for free anywhere. So we did the Dominic World Tour. Uh, went to all of our family in Ontario. She took him to like Mexico and Kelowna. Uh, we were very lucky. Um, it's a little side note on the uh, Dominic World Tour. We went to a CFL game. And lo and behold, there's Rob Ford. <laughs> <laughs> and we're Calgary, Calgary fans. So we're all dressed in our Calgary Stampeders red. We're walking up. We're, I, I just want to be like, I'm not a big fan of the guy. And so we're just trying to be like past him. But of course, he sees the red and he spikes an opportunity. He's like, that's the wrong color. So we just kept walking. <laughs> <laughs> it was good times. Uh, he made it to not one, but two Blue Jays games. Uh, we're, just, we're just living the dream, you know? And then we weren't. Um, it was around August when suddenly he, he wasn't the happiest kid ever. He wasn't sleeping through the night anymore. We went to the doctor and she prescribed some antibiotics thinking it was an ear infection. Didn't help, so we came back a couple days later, stronger antibiotics. And now we had these little weird sort of red bug bite type things on his head. We had we just put it off his eyes, oh, just some bugs, whatever. It's, it's summer, right? But that wasn't the case. We went to the pediatrician the next morning and he took a look at Dominic for about five minutes and he subbed me on the phone at the Alberta Children's Hospital. He's setting us there saying, well, it could be, could be three things. It could be meningitis, it could be cancer, or it could be some other viral thing. Of course, I picked the viral thing. That's what it was going to be. So, we got there that night, and it was the worst one. It was leukemia. More specifically, it was acute myeloid leukemia. Blood cancer. Usually, there's, there's multiple types of leukemia, but one that he had was the more intense to treat. Basically, what it meant was, we were looking at the next six months basically in a hospital room um, and maybe two weeks away from it, you know, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe get home, we didn't even know. I can't overstate what a shock that is. It's <laughs> the irony today, the 10 year anniversary of the, the, the triple murder of Medicine Hat, but I kind of liken it to a, a murder that happens to your community. Nobody ever thinks it's going to happen, right? But it, it happens to somebody. The same kind of thing happens to children's cancer. Nobody likes to think that it could ever happen to yours, but it's happening to somebody. And, well, it happened to us. So, that's what it is. It was exactly a month before Dominic's birthday, first birthday, when he was diagnosed. Um, we found a great place to send him to a daycare. Um, his church is 95 pounds. That's why she's not here tonight. She's, she's working, working her butt off. And I work 3 to 11 in the uh, medicine and use the newspaper. So when this happens, the first financial thing that happens is loss of income. Of course, Trisha now can't go back to work. Um, she had in the hospital the whole time. He had kicks in for a while, but 
when you've got a critically ill child, that, that doesn't last forever. It, doesn't, it, it runs out. The other thing is we just bought a new car. I haven't even made a payment on it yet. Dealership didn't even return our phone calls or email and I was just asking for help. Now this was back before we knew how the county was having cancer. And we were lucky. Because I'm a writer, I started writing a blog. And suddenly we had people wanting to do fundraisers, I got random donations. Um, I remember one day, um, I'm lying in the hospital bed with him and I got woken up. And the other line was like, hey, it's Jerry Forbes. What? Jerry Forbes? Now, I don't know if you got to do with Jerry, he's a great DJ in Calgary, very, very well known. And somebody had called in, let him know about our situation. And they were at the door with like cash and toys, and it was just amazing. And I was just like, is this really happening? Um, but it's true, people want to help in any way they can. Um, I remember meeting one mom whose son had an autoimmune disorder. And, you know, it's never, so there's only somebody who's, who's got, it, got it worse than you. And she, she was single, she was from Edmonton, and she hadn't been away from her hospital for probably two months, aside from going wrong with all dust to do laundry. So we took her out of the Calgary St. Peter's game, and my sister Erin babysat that kid for the night. <laughs> and the look, the look on that mom's face. Well, you, you can't go home and set friends in the hospital, right? Another hurdle was my work. They were great. Uh, they let me just work four days a week. And every Thursday after work at 11 p.m., I drive three hours to the dark of Calgary to get here at 2 a.m. So I can spend the next two days with my family. I can do that drive my sleep. <laughs> and many times all went well, I sort of did. <laughs> Probably not so safe, but. Uh, that, that new car was getting broken pretty quick and it's not great on gas. But you know what, Dominic, he led the way. He, he loved that hospital, which doesn't make any sense, but when you're 11 months old, everything's new, right? It's all new adventure, and you know, yeah, sure, they were poking and prodding him. I mean, the first night he was there, there was one kid that keep getting, because he didn't have his propiac on him yet, which is where you get all your meds from. Nurses kept having to come in, they couldn't find the veins, they had to keep poking and poking and poking. But the next day he was cool. And so that's just sort of normal. And he just loved playing in the backyard, you know, he, looked, he wanted me to push him around one more time in his, in his tricycle through the, through the sprinklers. And we were living the dream again. And then the cancer came back again. And now our options were limited to trials and new drugs and hopes for a miracle. I remember the day when we were told they'd invaded his brain. He told me he'd been reliant on his left hand, and there was concern he had a stroke. Well, the doctor explained the scans after the show of little clumps of leukemia scattered through his head. And that night was my first public speech for helping families handle cancer's fifth annual art auction in Calgary. So I told everybody the bad news. That's what you do. By the way, no pressure, guys, but they raised twenty-seven thousand dollars that night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're doing good right now. <laughs> we kept we kept getting assistance from helping families as the situation continued to get more dire. And then on Christmas Eve, we got the first news possible: it was terminal. Go home, they said. You've got a few weeks. It was the best, worst Christmas you could possibly imagine. I put up the Christmas lights, put up the tree, we had a full turkey dinner. And Dominic, at the time of his life, unwrapping all presents, could not have cared less what was in them. But then he loved ripping my favorite traits. There made him a present. Um, there was just layer upon layer of wrapping paper, and I'm pretty sure it was his favorite. He, he had these, 36 of them actually. We went to Vancouver, did horse riding, behind the scenes tour of the aquarium, the Canucks dressing room, then came back to Calgary where the flames wanted to meet him too. His thumbs up became his new favorite sign, as he never really did learn to speak. He did say mom once, mm -hmm. and I swear to God he said dad. <laughs> and after a while, some hope started to creep back in. Maybe, maybe he had a miracle in store for us after all. In August, the decision was made to send him on a wish trip to Disney World in Florida. Just getting there, that was a miracle, because the cancer was getting worse. We got a big day of Disney, well, more like two hours, because he needed platelet transfusions 
every single day while he was down there. And he loved it. We, we, he made friends with Alice. He was, he, 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 you'll see the photo. Ridiculous. He was just macking on all the, all the, all the Disney characters. <laughs> and uh, when we went to that platelet transfusion, high five, you're high, high five the doctor because all of a sudden he's like, wow, the blood test came back and you can take tomorrow off. If the last transfusion stuck so well, you can take tomorrow off. You don't have to come in the hospital tomorrow. We were so thrilled. We were going to go to the Universal the next day. Harry Potter, Simpsons, I was pumped. And the next morning he crashed. And then two, later, two days later he was gone. It was as though he wanted to spend his last days just with Trish and I in the happiest place in the world. Even when he was bent over, struggling to breathe in his last day, he managed to give a thumbs up. As if to say, don't worry, Dad. It's going to be okay. Government programs, they don't keep helping you once your kid's dead. The special tax credit we got ended, and they even had the nerve to audit us when we made an adjustment to our 2013 return. Got that money back Wednesday. But helping families handle cancer, fix that if you want. <laughs> Problem solved. <up>. Oh. <laughs> um, Elder County Sound of Cancer, they, they kept sending grocery cards in the mail. They kept sending gas cards because Trish still wasn't working. I'm not going to ask my, my grieving wife to suddenly go back to work after all this. And when we had his memorial service, Carrie made that three hour drive, that boring ass three hour drive, and he talked to us in half. Um, and I, thanks to that, you know, that assistance, I didn't, I didn't have to tell my wife to go back to work, and you know, we, we had that community still around us. And we still do to this day. Church back, went, but did go back to work a couple months ago. Um, as I said, she's, Working another 12 hour day today because it's tax season. Um, now I'm not going to stand here and say life's at all easy because it's absolutely not. <clears throat> because his, his ashes lay in his crib in his room, across the hall from our room. We're parents with no child to raise. Only one, only one to honor and leave a legacy for, it, which we do for this charity and the gaming charity Extra Life. All tied in through the Ash Day, don't make strong. Doing things like this here tonight are frankly invigorating. Uh, they give my life some purpose when some days I don't even want to get out of bed. But it's, it's better to cry and laugh and smile than to feel nothing at all. So I just like to thank everybody for, for letting me do that tonight with you guys.